Uh, the Jets played a game and uh, they should have won it. They had it in, in the bag, it seemed. Here's what they did uh, stat-wise. And uh, Buffalo with a 17-16 win over the Jets. Fourth quarter points, 14 for Buffalo, none for the Jets. And there you see the passing yardage and turnovers. Four turnovers uh, for, the, for the Buffalo Bills and one for the Jets. Penalties, uh, seven and eight. He added up, the Browns had more than those two put together. Yeah, that's not exactly a prescription for victory for the Bills. Four turnovers on the road, but they stand down 16-3 uh, in the fourth quarter, right. but uh, that's a bad loss if there is such a thing for the Jets. They're going to be desperate, just like Cleveland is. And the Jets will be thinking about last year on prime time Thursday night. They're going to want payback. So they still we'll want see. it for Joe Namath and uh, Billy Andrews, right? The, yeah. the original yeah. uh, game Monday let me, night. Football. Let me say this: much like the Titans, Les, yeah. I think the Jets' defense, at least up front, needs to be taken seriously. Yeah. The Jets' front on defense is good. Absolutely. All right. Let's see what if you're a Jets fan. Let's see what you're uh, looking at positively from last week. Uh, you've got. Uh, uh, the wide receiver out for the season with a neck injury, and uh, de they acquired uh, Demarius uh, Thomas from the Patriots. Usually the Patriots don't uh, trade within their own division. That's for a six-round pick. Uh, they got that picking didn't take problems. long on Mr. Vet, no, did it? No, it, it didn't. In fact, uh, the guy who kicked for, uh, uh, for uh, Tennessee on Sunday actually tried out for the Browns on Friday. There you have it. And uh, Sam Darnold was sent home from practice dealing with a strep throat. I, I find that hard to believe that he's got strep throat and he's going to be available Monday, ready to go. Really? N not at full strength. Uh, not, not my strep throat. <laughs> <laughs> that sacked me, pun intended, for a while. Well, let's see what uh, Sam Darnold did in the first game for the Jets. And uh, 28 completions and 41 attempts, 175 yards and a touchdown. He was sacked four times in that game against Buffalo. Le'Veon Bell has joined the uh, New York Jets. Look at him. First week versus Buffalo at the bottom. You see one uh, 17 carries and uh, the yardage. And uh, you see yards. also yeah. they, they, they threw out of the backfield to him six times, six uh, receptions in that game. Yeah, I mean, Bell figures to be a big part of that offense no matter what. Um, but uh, uh, Darnold's numbers were pedestrian. I mean, maybe some of that's the Bills' defense, but Darnold's got to be better, you know, if the Jets want to go could, anywhere. Could very well be. How about the stat? If you go 0 and 2, your odds of making the playoffs is not good at all. No, it's in the teen percentage-wise. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I, I again, I'm not even talking about that as much as I am. For this particular Browns team, you go 0-2, the doubt has crept in, and now you start to say, okay, when are we going to get our first victory? You know, you almost don't get to say, well, it's only one game, because one game becomes two games, becomes three games, who knows? That's right. However, they're not firing the coach. No, no. Uh, I, I will say this, though. Th this bears watching as we go forward. It looked to me... Like Freddie Kitchens had too much on his plate in game one. Wasn't that my call about play calling and all? For it him? was. Now, you could say, well, what do you expect? He's, it's his first game as an NFL head coach and it, that mattered. Okay, give him a mulligan. But if you see it again against the Jets where he doesn't look comfortable, where the play calling is not quite as creative as it used to be, as it was last year, then you start to wonder, all right, is he going to think about offloading those plays? But we're not there yet. No. I'm just saying it bears watching. No, but what, here's one of the problems. You got you went seven deep on your offensive line because of the injuries and the ejection. Yes. You got to be – you can't be the offensive coordinator. You got to take a look at the whole picture. You got to have somebody else calling the, the plays and you making the judgments on what you do at the line. Right. Well, you may, that's a great point, Les. When all that chaos was occurring on the line with Robinson and then the injuries, you would, I think in a perfect world, you'd like Kitchens to be the overseer sure. and be able to take that in and go, all right, here's what I'm thinking. Now I'm going to communicate it to Munkin on the headset or if he calls a play that I think 
is exposing our weakened offensive line, I'll simply overrule sure. them. Sure. But when you I'm have to do coach. when you have to do all that, all that comes with being a head coach. And you saw Freddie getting wrapped up in the with the referees, with the penalties. And yes, and by the way, when he did that, he lost a minute, he lost a lot of seconds on the clock, which uh, near the end of the half, he's got to call a timeout and get two extra plays in there. Right, and you're th- you're saying, okay, if he's going to be preoccupied by the refs, and then he's got to think about what his defense is doing and what his special teams is doing, and oh, by the way, he's got to call plays. Yeah. That's I, I'm, I'm not panicking because it's, a, it's only one game, but that, that was something to look out for from, from day one. 